types of volcanoes. A volcano is an opening on the surface that allows material from Earth's magma chambers to escape. The materials can be lava, rock, ash, gases, or a combination of them. When the materials escape, it causes an eruption that can be explosive, sending materials skyrocketing to the sky, or a calm, gentle flow. Most volcanoes occur in areas where the Earth's tectonic plates move toward each other or away from each other. However, they can also occur in areas called hotspots, a location over a mantle plume where the magma is hotter than the surrounding areas. There are three main types of volcanoes, cinder cone, composite or stratovolcano, and shield. Veo Volcano in Utah is a cinder cone. Cinder cones are the most well-known types of volcanoes. They have steep conical hills with a crater at the top. The more technical name for them is scoria cones. Scoria are high vesicular fragments of lava that can fly into the air during eruption and are solids by the time they land. Cinder cones are the smallest volcanoes with most just a few hundred feet tall. They are often surrounded by dark lava flows that erupt near their base. Cinder cones are mainly basaltic to basaltic andesite Eruptions are usually mild to moderately explosive, ranking at a 1 to 2 on the volcanic explosive index, but sometimes can reach a 4. They usually only have one eruption, so they're monogenetic, usually lasting less than 30 days, with 95% of them lasting less than a year. They are found with other volcanoes and can occur in calderas or on the sides of composite and shield volcanoes. Mount Hood in Oregon is a composite volcano, otherwise known as a stratovolcano. These volcanoes can be thousands of feet tall and commonly have snow-covered peaks. Their shape is conical with a concave shape that is steeper near the top. They are composed of lava flows, pyroclastic deposits, and mud flow deposits. Composite volcanoes have multiple eruptions with a range of compositions and have different types of eruptions. They can have eruptions resulting in lava and pyroclastic flows that help build up their size, as well as large blasts that destroy vast areas of their summits. The most common eruptions are composed of andesitic and dacitic magmas that can erupt a range of compositions from basalt to rhyolite. They are typically active for hundreds of thousands of years with multiple eruption and dormant periods in between. Many of them are found along the Ring of Fire, a location where different tectonic plates meet. Mauna Loa in Hawaii is a shield volcano. Shields are the largest volcanoes on Earth. They are known for their gentle slopes that resemble a warrior shield. They are usually constructed of basaltic or andesitic lava flows that are very fluid. These lava flows occur intermediately over long periods of time, sometimes for over a million years. Shields do not have explosive eruptions. Instead, their lava flows slowly for long periods of time, allowing the lava to travel long distances. Their eruptions come from both the top of the volcano and vents on the side. The lava can also travel in channels or lava tubes. Many shields experience multiple eruptions over their lifetime and to their size. Multiple eruptions means they're polygenetic. They are located adjacent to subduction zones and continental rift zones and can also occur in hot spots. Let's wrap it up. Volcanoes are openings on the Earth's surface that allow material from Earth's magma chambers to escape. And there are three main types of volcanoes. Cinder cone are the most common. They have conical shape with steep sides. They're the smallest and most have just one singular explosion. Composite or stratovolcanoes are many different types of explosions, different types of compositions, and multiple eruptions. And shield volcanoes are the largest. There's no explosions, they just have gentle lava flows. There's multiple eruptions for over an extreme number of years. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications 
for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.